Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm going to be your host for this afternoon session where we're looking at the VAT return and specifically we're looking at it from a, a flat rate schemes uh, perspective. So I'm your host, so I'm going to be doing the talking, the demos, and along the way, I'll be trying to answer any questions that you might have as well. Now, as far as questions are concerned, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started, just so you know what's going to be happening. You don't need a microphone for these sessions. If you've got one and you've enabled it, you'll find you just muted automatically. So you, you can't you can't verbally speak to me during the session, but you will be able to pop your questions in via the questions panel. Now, you, to access the questions panel, you just on your toolbar, you need to click that little icon, the one that looks like the speech bubble containing the question mark. Give it a click. It'll expand the panel. You get the box in the bottom right hand corner. And then you'll be able to start typing any questions or comments that you have. Now, it is just myself running this session with you today. So do bear with me. I may not be able to jump on the questions immediately, but we'll try. I'll try and pick up as many as I can. So I'll keep your questions coming. I'll hang around for questions at the end of the session as well. If anyone wants to download a copy of today's slides, you can do that via that little icon on your toolbar as well. So the one that looks like a little bit of paper with a corner folded over, you'll then get a box where you can highlight the copy of the slides and download that as a PDF. Now, afterwards, you will receive a follow-up email. That follow-up email will include a number of links. One will be to uh, a link to the recording of today's session. So if you need a bit of a recap on what we cover, uh, then that will be available to you. There will be a link included so you can register for other webinars that we've got planned in. So currently you can book up to the end of August and we'll shortly be adding our September sessions on there as well. So they're all free to attend. You can, any, any of that, Take your, take your fancy, just get yourself registered for them. And then the other link will be to our recordings page. So we've run loads of sessions, loads of different topics. It's about, it must be about 80 or 90 of them now. Uh, so if you are interested, do check that out as well. And it's a good way of playing catch up as well. So a good way of using the service so you can access those whenever you want. So keep the, those links handy because it's always the same, essentially the same links that you're going to receive from our webinars. If you do register for a session and you can't attend, don't worry, we'll just send you the link to the recording afterwards. Now, today's session should last in the region about 45 minutes. I'm going to try and keep it really simple. I'm not here today to preach the, the benefits or the drawbacks of being on the flat rate scheme. What we're looking at today is the flat rate schemes in the UK and how you go about processing or setting them up and processing transactions under that scheme, generating the VAT return. Uh, within Sage 50. So if you need advice, which it'll mention on our slides in a, a few minutes time as well, if you need advice on wh whether the scheme's right for you or not, you need to speak to an accountant or someone like a tax advisor. So we're going to start with a little bit of an introduction today, a little bit of background to the flat rate schemes, tell you a little bit about them. So obviously we're looking at the flat rate schemes from a, a UK perspective today. We're then going to run through a series of demonstrations looking at the software. So we're going to look at the basics of setting up on the flat rate scheme just to check your settings. Some of you might already be set up for that. Some of you might just be about to change scheme or even register for VAT in the first place. So we're going to look at setting up. We'll, we'll look at entering data. Uh, we'll pick up on capital asset purchases because there is an exception to uh, entering transactions and the way that you need to do that. We're going to look at the VAT return itself, run through the VAT return, show you how it calculates, obviously a little bit different under the flat rate scheme. Part of the VAT return, there is the benefit cost option, which we always get queries about that. So I'm just going to quickly show you that one. We'll explain how it calculates and what it's showing you. And then we'll finally, we're going to pick up on the, the VAT tasks as well. So as part of that fat return process, you've got the VAT tasks, three tasks included, and that will include a demonstration of how you go about submitting your VAT return online. So you'll see what that looks like. Really easy process, that one. Once we've run through the demos, uh, we'll then just explain a little bit more about the support options that you've got available to you. If you do need a little bit more help with a VAT or anything else to do with your software for that matter. And then we'll also explain a little bit about some of the topics we've got coming up for webinars that we've got planned in. And then 
as I say, we'll open up to questions at that point as well. So I'll just hang around and maybe pick up any outstanding questions that you may have asked that I may not have had a chance to touch on during the session itself. But the opportunity to get those final questions in. Right, okay, so let's get started. So a little bit of background to flat rate VAT schemes here in the UK. So the idea of the flat rate schemes or FRS for short, you'll sometimes see it abbreviated as that, is that it offers small businesses an alternative to the normal sort of transaction based method of VAT accounting. So it's a it's a much simpler method of calculating the VAT return and you'll see that in the demonstration today as well. Now flat rate VAT is calculated as a percentage of your your total turnover for the relevant period. So it's all looking at your turnover, your sales value, and it will multiply that by your, your business category percentage. Now, percentage-wise, uh, that is determined. They are preset by HMRC. So you'd be able to look those up online via HMRC's website. So as I say, the flat rate, the, your VAT liability will essentially calculate as a percentage of your total turnover. And that percentage will appear in box one when you calculate your return. So we'll see that uh, as we run through the demonstration today. And as I mentioned, if, if you need advice on whether you know the, the, the flat rate scheme is the right scheme for you, then if you refer to HMRC for the qualifying conditions, but obviously if you need advice or not speak to an accountant or a tax advisor. Now what I have done is I've linked to the two main uh, help center articles. So if you have downloaded the handout, those links should work for you at the bottom there. So there are two, there's an invoice based scheme and a cash based scheme. So equivalent of standard accounting and cash accounting. So there's the equivalent for flat rates as well. So I'll explain more about that, how they calculate, what transactions they pick up, etc. Right, what we're going to do though, we're going to run through a series of demonstrations at this point. So I'll start sharing my screen and we'll run through uh, the, 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 the demo on the webinar. Right, okay. Let me just share my desktop then. We'll get stuck in. So I am in version 29 of Sage 50 accounts today, so it makes no difference version wise. As long as you run an up to date version, you have you should have all of the options that I'm looking at today. So we're going to start by going into uh, settings at the top of the screen there and into company preferences. It'll prompt you to enter your password. So it's the password that you use when you log in. And then within the company preferences window, we've got the VAT tab. So we just give that a click. So I've got my VAT reg number entered. I've got my non vatable tax code, which by default will be T9. That's spot on. Leave it as that. And then you've got your VAT scheme. Now, when you've got no transactions entered in the software, you're going to find that you've got you're presented with these four options. So standard VAT, you've got uh, VAT cash accounting in the UK. You've got flat rate invoice based and flat rate cash based. Now I'm going to set up for the flat rate invoice based in today's session. Again, if you need to know what's best for you, then you need to get advice away from Sage itself. And then all you need to do beyond that is pop in your flat rate business category percentage. So again, you'll be able to look that up via HMRC's website. While you're in here as well, what I would also do is select this checkbox if you haven't already to enable making tax digital for VAT submissions so that you'll be able to submit your VAT return online. Now, other than that, that's me set up and ready to go. I don't need to do anything different with my when I'm entering transactions. I don't need to do anything with uh, customers or supplier records or my product records. The way that you enter transactions is exactly the same as if you were on a different VAT scheme. And that's what we're going to look at next. So we're just entering some 
basic transactions. Now, in this example, this set of data that I'm using today, if I just pop into uh, the transactions list, you'll see there's nothing entered so far. I've got a basic skeleton of a company, just so we can see what the impact of those transactions look like. If I just pop into customers, you'll see I've got some records there, but they all have a zero balance. Obviously no transactions entered so far. Uh, and suppliers, I've got some supplier records, but again, they all have a zero balance. So we're essentially starting from scratch, just so you can see the impact of the transactions as we, as we enter them. Now, if we just pick on customers as an example, and what I'll do is I'll just select a customer. It doesn't really matter which one for the purpose of this demo, and we'll click batch invoice. So let's pull through that customer onto the batch invoice screen. I've got today's date in there, so we're the 17th of July. I'll just accept that. I'll pop in a reference. Let's say that would be the invoice number. And I'll leave the nominal code as is. I'll just say sales, and just for the sake of argument, we'll say £10,000. And I'll say we charged VAT, so T1, so 20%. So £10,000 plus £2,000 VAT. Now, the business category percentage for your flat rate scheme, that does not change the rate of VAT that you charge or are charged. You still apply VAT to your transactions in the normal way. So it's calculating in this case at 20%, so £2,000 VAT. And we'll just save that. So as you can see, nothing, nothing, nothing changes in that respect. If we go into bank accounts, and we'll, let's start with a bank receipt. If I can find the right option, there we go, bank receipt at the top. So again, we'll say this is for some income where we, we haven't, invoiced anyone for that one. We'll just say it's more of a, a cash-based sale. So I choose the bank account, the date. I'll just say cash. Pop in a nominal code. So we'll say it's sales, so 4,000. Let's put sales in the, can't type today. Sales in the details. And we'll say this one was for 500 pounds and we charge VAT on that one. So 100 pound VAT. So we save it, and as you can see, again, nothing is any different to normal. If we enter a bank payment, so we'll just say it was a basic expense, pop in a reference, and what will I put? I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Uh, right, we'll just say some stock. Obviously, it may be in it an invoice that you paid for there and then it might be a receipt number so we'll just say five thousand see materials and we'll say that was for a hundred pounds we've been charged VAT at 20 percent so I'll just leave again I'll leave that set to T1 so that it calculates the VAT at 20 percent save it just like normal nothing changes and then the final one I'm going to show you is if I do a batch invoice again really no difference in, in this in this instance pop in a reference number nominal code again you would just use the nominal codes just as normal nothing changes in the way that you enter transactions Let's see, purchases We'll say this one was for, let's say, £200. T1 tax code, £40 VAT. We save that. And that's it as far as entering transactions is concerned. Really no difference. Now, under the flat rate scheme, there is one exception. And that's when it comes to making a capital asset purchase. So I'm just going to pop back to the slides for a moment. And the only time you would differ, so when you make that capital asset purchase, and again, if you need to, if you need information about what, what qualifies as a capital asset purchase, whether you can reclaim VAT, et cetera, under the flat rate scheme, then again, please refer to the information on HMRC's website. 
But generally under the, the flat rate scheme, the purchase of capital assets costing more than £2,000, including VAT, where you can recover the VAT on that one, because it is an exception. Normally, when you run a VAT return under the flat rate scheme, it doesn't it, it doesn't do any calculation and include any of the your purchase transactions on that VAT return. So this is the exception where it's a capital asset purchase where it's more than two thousand pound, including VAT, where you can recover the VAT. Then you should record that with a T twenty five tax code. Now T twenty five is the default tax code for capital asset purchase under the flat rate scheme. Now I would encourage you to check yours. Don't just put T25 if you are, you know, you're trying to enter one of these transactions. So check it. There can be occasions where maybe T25 was actually in use when we when we introduced T25 as a tax code. And therefore it would have taken up the next available tax code that wasn't currently in use at that time. But generally you'll probably find that T25 is the right one. Now, if you want to check whether that is the right one and you've got that set up correctly, all you would need to do, if I just pop back to my desktop, is in Sage, you go to settings, into on the menu, top option, configuration, click yes to close the other windows, and then you've got a tax codes tab at the top. So if we give that a click, You'll see you've got the tax codes listed, so it goes from T0 all the way down to T99. So you've got essentially 100 tax codes potentially that you could use in your software, but we're looking for T25. So T25, the rate, because I'm in the UK, is showing us 20%. In use is flagged as Y. Export imports, have an N against it, and it's got your description there as well. Now you can edit that. So you'll see the description, the rate, etc. that's in here. And you can see it's flagged to include in the VAT return. So it's ticked and also it's flagged as a capital asset, sorry, a flat rate capital asset. So this should be set up automatically for you, but do check that yours is set up just so you know what it should be. You probably find you only use it occasionally, quite probably quite rare. So just make sure that's set up. Just OK, let's get back to the desktop. So that is the one exception. That's what would. So if you're in, you're running your VAT return and you're thinking, why hasn't it picked up that capital asset purchase? You've got to make sure you flag it appropriately. Right, OK. So assuming we've entered some transactions, I've still got my screen shared with you. What we're going to look at next is we're going to have a look at the, the VAT return itself. Now, some of you may have already attended a VAT return session. And as far as generating your VAT return is concerned and checking your figures, etc., nothing really changes in that respect. So we'd still go into the VAT ledger. So we access it via this uh, your navigation bar down the left. So into VAT. And then we would click the VAT return option. Now, if you've already got a VAT return listed, make sure you've deselected it before you click VAT return. Otherwise, it'll just bring up that VAT return. So I've got nothing entered so far VAT return wise. So we'll just click VAT return. So we've got three steps for the VAT return. And for in step one, it's got a number of tasks. So what I'm going to do is we'll just follow this through just so you can I'll explain some of the steps along the way. So the first one is the backup. The reason you're taking that backup is the only way you can undo a VAT return if you've reconciled it, maybe an error, is by restoring a backup that you would have taken prior to doing that. So if you're just about to do your VAT return, make sure you take a backup at this stage. So I'm just going to click backup just so you can see what that looks like. Now at this stage, just a bit like a daily backup. You'd probably only want to include the data files. So make sure that one's ticked. If you don't tick that one, 
and you maybe have some of the others ticked, you'll get a warning saying it doesn't include any data files. So make sure you've got that one ticked. Whether you want to include others, that's up to you. You don't necessarily need to at this stage. Give it a file name. So we'll just say pre VAT return. Choose your location. So I'll just put mine on my desktop. And then we're going to click OK. So it does prompt you, would you like to check your data before you back up? I would always encourage you to click yes to that prompt. Now, the length of time it takes for it to check your data is going to vary. You probably see on mine, it's almost instantaneous because we've only got those four transactions entered so far that we've, that we've already seen. So if I just click yes to that, obviously the more data you have, the longer it's going to take. So we just let that run through. It tells me there are no problems to report on my data files. Now, if you did run a check data and you had any errors, warnings or comments, all you would need to do is click the tab down the left hand side, so the relevant one, to find out what the error, warning or comment relates to. And it will give you a bit more detail here. And depending on the nature of the error, warning or comments, it's either going to tell you maybe that you need to restore if there was corruption in your data, uh, or you would be provided with a link. So you can make a note of what the error warning or comment was, click the link at the bottom, and it will tell you how you go about resolving that. If in doubt, if you were ever in that position, fingers crossed you won't be, uh, then you just get in touch with our support team. Anyway, that's the data checked. So I'm just gonna close out. It tells me the backup's been successful again really quick on mine and that's again because I've got a tiny set of data virtually nothing entered so far just okay that one and then I'm returned back to the VAT return itself next we want to specify the date range for our fat return now let's say we're doing up to and including the end of July so we're going to do May June July so the full VAT quarter Obviously, you wouldn't normally you wouldn't normally do it in advance of the period ending, but I want it to pick up those transactions, those four transactions that I've just entered with today's date. So pop in your period. If you wanted to, you can switch to a custom date range. Tend to find you're sticking with whole months. It means that make sure that you're not accidentally saying I want to run that up to the 30th of July when there's 31 days in the month. So use the calendar method. This option you wouldn't normally tick to include reconcile transactions. That's really a, 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 an historic option, that one, that you may have used in the past if you, you need to rerun a VAT return for an older period just for analysis purposes. But these days you probably find that you never ever use that option. So leave it blank. Next, we've got the VAT verification area. So here we've got eight, it says on mine, eight checks to run automatically. You might find that yours only says seven. And that will be dependent on the level of software you're running. So if, if you're on the professional level of the software, you will get eight checks. If you're on the essentials level or the standard level of Sage 50 accounts, then you're going to get seven checks. Just click into settings so you can see what those are. They will all be ticked by default. And it may be going forward that you, you look at them and think, well, actually, I don't need to check that one. It doesn't benefit me, that one. Or maybe you don't enter transactions in a certain area. But the idea of this is that hopefully it will try and identify any potential issues for you. It's not necessarily saying there are issues. It's just saying these are potential queries. So. Maybe it's found a transaction. It's got the same transaction type. It's got the same date, same reference number, same value, etc. So it'll try and identify that for you. So when well, you're entering some information, you, you've sort of got interrupted. You, you come back to it. You've picked up where you, you left off and you've accidentally duplicated something. So it'll try and identify that for you. For missing entries, have you got any invoices or credits on the invoices list that haven't yet been updated to your ledgers? 
So you've entered the invoice, but actually it's not it's not being included in the VAT return itself, that invoice, because you haven't updated it to the ledgers. Again, it will just try and identify that for you. This is the one that means you've either got seven or eight checks. So this one here, the identify purchase orders which have been delivered but not invoiced. So you'll only get this, this specific check if you're on the professional level of the software. Next option is to identify transactions that have a VAT value, but where you've used a tax code that isn't flagged to not be included in the VAT return. So when we looked at T25 a few minutes ago, for instance, it was ticked to include in VAT return. So have you accidentally used entered a transaction and you've used a tax code where that box isn't ticked? So for instance, did you mean to type in T1, for instance, and you've typed in T11, for instance? So it'll again, it'll try and identify that for you. So is it just a, a processing error that you've made? Coming into this other potential issues area, so we can check the VAT values on transactions. So you've got some sort of what you would term these tolerance settings. So if a transaction has a VAT value, is it within 18 to 21% of the net value? Now, things that could potentially throw out a, a query at that point would be the likes of, say, uh, a 5% VAT transaction. Now that's not wrong, it's just saying it's a bit unusual. So that, that sort of scenario potentially it could, could throw things out. So things like uh, domestic fuel, that type of thing, where maybe charging or have been charged 5% at a lower rate. Or is it just a case you've, you've accidentally overtyped a transaction? So you've keyed in, say, £100 into the net column and you weren't concentrating and you've keyed it in again into the, the VAT column. So it's going to try and identify that type of thing for you. You can amend these, these settings as well if you want to narrow it down if needed. Next check is to identify sales and purchase transactions not using your most common tax code. So you can change this. But by default, it will be set to T1. Now, potentially, this can throw out loads of loads of queries as well. Again, not saying it's wrong; it's just saying that you've got this set as you being your most commonly used tax code. So, have you got other transactions that don't use this? Now, day to day, you're probably going to have a range of tax codes that you use. You probably have zero rated transactions. If you charge bank bank charges, for instance, you might have you know, bank charges in the UK would be classed as being exempt. So you probably use T2 for that transaction. So again, it would just throw it out as a query. It's not saying it's wrong, it's just saying these don't use your most commonly used tax code. You've got an option to identify journals where the tax code is not selected as non vatable Now the wording on that one's not the best, but basically have you got any journals where you haven't used T9. The vast majority of journals that you would key into Sage accounts, you will use T9. Yes, there will be exceptions to that. But generally, most journals, bank transfers, the payment of salaries, uh, etc., they will, they will use a T9 tax code. So again, if it finds any, it'll identify those for you. And then finally, the bottom one, if you're in the UK, uh, not really of much use these days since Brexit, but this will identify possible incorrect EC transactions. So have you used an, uh, a tax code which is flagged as an EC transaction and you haven't got the right information saved within the, the customer or supplier record, such as the VAT registration number? So again, it will just try and identify that for you. So these will all be ticked by default. It's up to you which of them you leave switched on. I'm going to leave them all selected. I'll just OK that. So step one, you're taking a backup, you're specifying your date range and you're not really doing anything with this that verification option. You're just leaving the options ticked. You're then ready to click calculate VAT return. 
So I'll click it. Again, very quick on mine, you're gonna get this progress bar depending on how many transactions you've got. So it'll give you those transactions. It tells me there's four, those four I've entered so far. And it does say, please check all, all values thoroughly before you reconcile and submit your VAT return. Now that takes me nicely on to step two. Now potentially a slightly different window could have appeared there. If I did have any transactions which maybe I missed last time when I ran my VAT return previously, and then I've subsequently come in and I thought, oh, I should have entered those. I can still backdate those transactions to the previous period. Just means when it, when you next run your VAT return, it'll say, right, these are prior to the period, haven't been included on a VAT return yet. Do you want to include them now? So you'll get an option to include them or ignore them if that's the case. Anyway, we've got no verification results, which I wouldn't expect just based on those four. If you did have any results, then this option will be active and you could start you could start clicking it and seeing what those potential queries are. You've got an option to make adjustments and add attachments to your VAT return. Now, chances are you'll probably not use this option. It's mainly this make adjustments option and add attachments. It's mainly going to be used where you run a partial exemption VAT scheme. And again, if you follow the information in the help center, it would guide you through making adjustments, etc. So vast majority, you're probably never going to use that option. Now, what you will see is that we've got some figures calculated here. Now, this is where it differs from the standard VAT schemes. So what we've got in box six, because we're on the flat rate invoice based scheme, is we've got all of our, essentially our, our full turnover. And that's going to include the VAT that we've charged our customers. So 12,600. So you might remember it was the £10,000 invoice that entered, plus the VAT, and also the £500, which was the bank receipt I entered, plus the VAT. So £12,600 in total. Now, if you want to see what where that figure comes from, so you might be looking at that thing. Well, ooh, I wasn't expecting it to be that high, or maybe a bit lower than you expected, or just in general, you want a better understanding of where that figure comes from. What you can do is just click on it. So if I click on this value here, this little icon attached to box six, it'll drill down. So it's telling me in this instance. or oh, 12 12,000 pounds against invoices where I've used T1 and also I've got this value here in the receipts column so that's the bank receipt I entered 500 pound plus the VAT where I've used T1 as well a little bit different from the standard VAT scheme this one in that if you're looking at this and you are on the standard based invoice scheme then it's only going to show you the net value with the flat rate it shows you the gross value so the net plus the VAT. Now, if you wanted to drill down on a on, on a, a certain value on this table, all you would do is highlight it, then double click it. And that would drill down and it would give you that transactional information. And obviously you can print the list, you can send it to Excel. So in my case, I've only got the one transaction in sort of each area. In yours, you're probably gonna have loads. So it's always a good way to, when people contact our support team, the querying a value will show them how to drill down and more often than not, it just points them in the right direction and gives them a bit of a reminder, oh yeah, it was that. That's why it's a little bit different from what I was expecting. So what you've got in box six in this instance is the full, essentially the gross turnover figure that includes the VAT. Now, the value in box one is this value, the value in box six, multiplied by your business percentage. Now, earlier when we looked at our settings, I've got mine set to 10%, just to make it a nice round figure. 
percentage wise, again, you would need to calculate to see what your, your business percentage actually is. You'll find that on HMRC's website. So in my case, 10%, so 1,260 pounds. Now I'm gonna quickly mention this benefit cost option and I've got a bit of an example uh, that I wanna quickly mention. I've just pop back to the slides for a moment. I just want to explain a little bit about what that benefit cost option is going to do. Now, when you click the benefit cost option, it'll bring up a window, a bit like what we've got on the slide there, where it's, in my case, because I'm set up for the flat rate invoice based scheme, what it's going to do is it's going to calculate the, the VAT return in the background based as if I was on the standard invoice based VAT scheme as well. So it'll show me in this case the standard VAT for sales, for purchases, and based on that what my VAT liability would have been based on the same transactions that have been included in the VAT return. Now it'll then compare that to the VAT liability that has calculated based on the flat rate scheme that I'm on, and it'll give me an indi indication whether it's beneficial for me to be on that scheme or not. You often find it quite often that people will be on the, the flat rate scheme thinking it's beneficial to them because it's it's that much simpler, but actually they might be better off being on, on a slightly different scheme rather than the flat rate scheme. So this is only an indication. So it runs that basic calculation in the background to compare your flat rate VAT liability against the equivalent standard fat liability. And it will, obviously, if there is a difference, it's gonna show you the benefit. So it is an indication only, it's not saying, right, you must switch, or you're much better off being on the scheme you're on. So it's just an indication, basic calculation. Again, if you need advice, whether the flat rate scheme is the right one to be on, then you need, again, you need to speak to your accountant or tax advisor on that. So let's pop back to the my desktop and this time on the VAT return we've got this benefit cost option at the bottom. So you can see my, my liability under the flat rate scheme at the moment is £1,260 which is the 10% of my total turnover figure for the period. So if I click benefit cost what it's saying here is that my uh, the if I'd been on the standard VAT scheme, my figure in box one essentially would have been uh, 2,100. The figure in box, in this case, box four, it would have been 60 pounds. So my overall VAT liability, based on the current period calculation, would have been 2,040 pounds. And what it's saying in this instance, because we're looking at the flat rate, the flat rate, calculation is actually 1,260. So it's saying actually the difference between the schemes, I mean, it benefits me being on the flat rate scheme by 780. So basic calculation that it's doing there in the background, as I say, it's just comparing your flat rate liability to the standard equivalent VAT scheme. If you're on cash accounting, so if you're on the flat rate cash based, it will compare that calculation is if you are just on cash accounting. But again, if you need that advice on whether it's the right scheme for you, whether you should stick with it, then accountant or tax advisor is who you need to speak to. Our support team can't advise you on that. They can't recommend which VAT scheme you should be on. Explain how it works, but not which scheme you should be on. So that's the benefit cost option. And now you'll only see that benefit cost option on Step two, if you are on one of the flat rate schemes, if you're on one of the other schemes, standard invoice based or cash accounting scheme, you wouldn't see that option. It's only active in the bottom right hand corner when you're on a flat rate scheme. Now obviously you've got the drill down so you can check your figures. You've got the options to print your reports as well. And you've got the reconciliation reports as well. Now there's some great articles in our help center on how you can check and help you to understand 
how each of the boxes actually calculates or which transactions. If you were running reports, what do you need to add to what? <coughs> Excuse me, just bear with me one moment there. Sorry about that. Right. So anyway, we, let's say we've checked our figures. You can print your reports out if you need them. You can always do it later on if you need to. Once you've, even when you've reconciled your VAT return, you can still go and generate your, your VAT return reports. There's a number of reports that you can generate. So there's the VAT return itself, boxes one to nine. You've then got the summary, which is almost the, it's the equivalent of drilling down on each of these boxes. So when I got that table, of transactions, values by tax code, it would be the equivalent of that. The detailed report is an excellent one to have. That will give you a list of the transactions that are contributing to the value. So, you know, if you had a fat inspection, for instance, and they say, right, you, you know, you've declared this figure in box one of your VAT return, how did you calculate that? Well, it's the detailed report would give you that list of transactions. So based on what you've entered, here's the transactions, and that's where the value comes from. Now you can break it down by department. And there's a couple of options grayed out here as well. So adjustments and the earlier unreconciled entry uh, transactions. Now it's because I haven't included any adjustments and there weren't any late entries that I needed to include on the VAT return. And therefore, these ones are grayed out there. It's not relevant in this instance. So if I wanted any of them, I would just tick the relevant boxes. Obviously I can send it to printer, I can file it, or I can even just view it. Now let's say you've done that. You're quite happy with the figures and you think, right, well, I'm ready to reconcile. So we just click reconcile, prompts you, do you want to flag transactions as being fat reconciled? So we'd click yes to that prompt, little progress bar, and that then takes me on to step three. Now, what step three does, if I just close out, first of all, it generates a VAT return and adds it to the list. So when you come into VAT, you've got that VAT return listed then for the relevant period that you've just reconciled it for. If I go back into it by double clicking it, takes me back to that step three. So I can still drill down on the figures if I needed to, all the way down to transaction level. I can print my reports out. I can view any verification results from those seven or eight checks that we mentioned earlier. We can view any adjustments. We've got that benefit cost option still. So we can see that's basic calculation. But we've also got a series of VAT tasks. Now for that first one, that fat transfer, I don't really need to do anything with that one. The figures are completed for me automatically. What it will do with this one is it's going to pull some journals to transfer the reconciled VAT out of my sales and purchase tax control accounts across to my VAT liability. It'll also do an adjustment for the benefit cost value. It'll do that between your VAT liability and whatever nominal code you specify here, which what by default, I've changed mine previously. Uh, it is, if I can find it. Let's see if I'll find it on the list. I think I changed this one at least. I'm sure by default it's 4099. So in one quick last look. Yeah, should, should be 4099 by default, but you can override it. I've obviously de deleted that account and just I've changed it at some point. So it'll pick up whatever nominal code you specified here last time as well, but you can override that if needed. So you can choose which nominal code you want that adjustment to be posted against. All you need to do though, nice and simple, you just click post adjustment. Now, I'm going to come back to submitting online in just a moment. I've got a little video that I'll play for you for that one in just a second, just so you can see what that looks like. Final one to quickly mention is this one at the bottom, record payment. Now, it's probably always going to be record payment if you're on the flat rate scheme. You may be occasionally where 
because of a capital asset purchase that you've you've recorded where you can recover the VAT amount, and that would then be picked up when you've out return, you may find that you you can recover an amount at some point. But generally speaking, you're probably always going to have a liability in box five. If you do, this will say record payment. If it ever is a negative, it's going to say record receipt. Now, this is equivalent of you going into the bank accounts area and then just manually entering that transaction as a payment or a receipt. So essentially, it's doing it for you here. All you need to do is fill in the boxes. So which bank account are you paying your liability out of? What date have you made that payment? I'll just accept today's date. It's got my reference, which is my VAT registration number. The details will default to VAT payment and the amount will be whatever is in box five in this instance. All I need to do is click the button, post bank payment. And that's it done. So it records that, that payment in the background. <clears throat> Right, now the last bit I want to demonstrate to you is when you're ready to submit online. Now these days you can only su submit online to the Making Tax Digital Gateway, so MTD Gateway, which was when we looked at the VAT settings earlier, I said make sure you've got that option ticked to enable Making Tax Digital. Now to submit online, all you would do is you would click the button and you would follow that wizard through. Now I've got a little video of one of my colleagues actually doing a submission. So I'm gonna play that, and then I'll come back to you live in just a couple of minutes. This will just be so you can see what a submission and what that process looks like. So we'll set that playing. As I say, I'll come back to you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, so here is an example of a making tax digital submission. For the purposes of the submission, we are going to do a date for the 1st of April 2017 to the 30th of June 2017. And that is just to match the test submission portal with HMRC. Once we click submit online, it tells us about making tax digital. And then it will pull through the company details that we have entered in settings and then company preferences. So I shouldn't need to change anything at this point. So at this point, it communicates with HMRC and it wants authority for Sage to interact with HMRC on your behalf. Here it may ask you to enter a six digit code that they may send to your mobile phone or via a telephone call. And you may also need to confirm your identity. Next, you need to use your user ID and password for the Government Gateway to log into your account. So once we're logged in, we need to grant the authority and it should hold on to that information for the next 18 months. So next, what it's going to do is Next, what it's going to do is communicate with HMRC to look for your obligation period. So it's basically looking to see what period are we submitting for? This needs to match the period that we have created the return for in Sage. As you can see, this does. So in this case, I'm going to tick the box for the HMRC declaration and click Submit to HMRC. And this may take a moment or two to go through, but I should get a message once that's um, successfully submitted. Once done, I can close. And I may then want to confirm that that submission has been successful. So to do this, we can see under the Submit to HMRC section, we have an option to click on the Submission Confirmation. And this will give us a report which will contain the correlation ID and also details of the submission we have sent to HMRC. OK, I'm back live with you at that point. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an idea uh, about what that submission process looks like. So it's just a case of clicking that button when you're on step three of the VAT return, the wizard will pop up and it's just a case of following that through. So nice, simple task, that one. 
Okay, now that brings us to the end of the, the demo. I just want to quickly mention, just before I open up to questions though, actually I'm already on the right screen, a little bit about the Help Centre. So if you need more information about anything to do with your software for that matter, Help Centre is a great resource. Both flat rate schemes, loads of information about setting up, running your VAT return, checking your VAT return uh, figures. Uh, there's information about the flat rate VAT and postponed accounting. Also switching schemes as well. It's common as well. <clears throat> so uh, it's quite common that where you know where you may be on the 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 flat rate scheme and you get advised to to switch across. So that is actually possible. Uh, so loads of information about those processes and, and how to do that. Now, if you've got any questions, if you want to pop them in there, uh, should go, I'll pick up yours in just a moment. I'll just quickly mention questions and how you go about submitting them first of all. So if you weren't quite logged on at the start when I mentioned this one, uh, there will be that little icon on your toolbar on the right hand side of your screen, the one that looks like the speech bubble with the question mark, give it a click and then you'll be able to see that box in the bottom right hand corner. Just for upcoming webinars as well, to give you an idea of some of the sessions we've got planned in. And remember, you will receive a link so you can register for these on your follow up email, which you will receive in round about an hour's time. So we've got a one for bank recurring items, which can be a big time saver if you're sitting there keying in uh, things like direct debits and standing orders. If you're doing that manually each month, and that could be a big time saver. Departments we're covering Wednesday this week, the following week we're covering budgets. Credit charges we've got this week, the business dashboard, processes like bank reconciliation we cover as well. And there's also the new and improved bank feeds option, which we'll be introducing into version 29.2. Now version 29.2 isn't out yet, but it will be with us soon but it does include that improved bank feeds experience so if anyone wants to learn about bank feeds or if you're already using it please get yourself signed up for one of those sessions because it does look quite a bit different it can be a great time saver and help you to update your accounts and reconcile your bank accounts nice and easily so if you haven't yet signed up or you haven't heard about that one yet you can watch out for the follow-up email and it, it will be listed so you can get yourself registered there's loads of those sessions because it is Quite, quite a bit different to what you're going to be used to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, okay, so questions, keep them coming. I'll try and pick up as many as I can. I've only got the one outstanding at the moment. So Shuk, you were mentioning there, if a sales invoice is zero rated, does it mean you need to pay VAT for uh, the 10% under flat rate scheme? Uh, essentially, yes, it would mean that. You wouldn't charge VAT, but yes, it would, because of the way the the uh, the VAT the VAT return calculates for that scheme. <clears throat> it would mean that uh, that essentially when it in, it includes that value. So, say if you were charging a thousand pound and it was zero rated, when that transaction is included on your VAT return, because of the VAT the the, the flat rate scheme rules and its calculation, then yes, it would calculate 10% of that value and include it in the VAT liability. You've got to remember though, at the other extreme, based on my example, where it was 10%, if I was, uh, let's say I was charging 2,000 pounds, and overall I, I charge an extra 200, uh, sorry, going to be 400 pound VAT, so 2,400, when that's included on the the VAT return again under the VAT, uh, the flat rate scheme for that, that 2,400 at 10%, I'm only declaring 240 pounds. So again, your percentages is the idea is it sort of, it simplifies the process, simplifies the calculation, but it is a, it is a, a calculation or a percentage based on your business sector. And that's why we have included that that benefit cost button. So that will give you an idea whether it's beneficial to be on that specific scheme or not. So it's just a bit of a crude indicator, but again, it should hopefully it should give you a good idea. And again, remember you're not 
you know, you, uh, that 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 sort of calculation will take into effect that you're <clears throat> you're not generally in recovering VAT on the purchases as well. But if you need any advice, again, whether you should be on that scheme or not, then uh, yeah, uh, accountant or tax advisor would be the person to speak to. Hope that makes sense. Now that was the only question that I had outstanding at that point. So we'll probably just end the webinar just at that point in that instance. If you think of anything else after you've left the session, get in touch with our support team or uh, obviously there's loads of information in our help center. So let me quickly thank you for coming along. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Hope you've enjoyed it. And hopefully it's just clarified a little bit about how, you, how it works within, or how you go about processing the flat rate scheme in, in Sage 50. There will be a short survey pop up as you leave today. If you can take a minute to pop some feedback on there, it'd be great. So really appreciate it. We'll love reading those comments to see if we've hit the mark or not. Uh, so based around the webinar rather than whether it's the right scheme for you or not. So if you could take a minute to complete that, it'd be great. And your follow-up email should be with you in around about an hour's time. So please get yourself registered for some other sessions as well, if there's any would be of interest to you. So on that note, we'll say goodbye. Take care, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you on some other sessions soon. Many thanks.